empty old chair. Está en Ascamon. Está en Ascamon. Tengo a Cartier y Pérez. Aquí me ha dado. 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 Aquí me just to say I'm very thankful to be here, acknowledging the elders, the chiefs, the, the women, the youth, the leadership that's here, and of course, our, our kind, loving creator for another beautiful day, uh, 2018 in January. Uh, again, with uh, great respect to acknowledge all my relatives here in the room, and uh, to take the time to acknowledge uh, the leadership that's here as well, and uh, as well we acknowledge the Fort William, First Nation and G. Peter Collins for welcoming us to his ancestral lands here. We could say Thunder Bay is a suburb of Fort William. <laughs> Just like we say Kahnawake, Montreal is a suburb of Kahnawake outside Montreal. It's the same way here. We could say Thunder Bay is a suburb of Fort William, First Nation. So, Chief Collins, uh, thank you. To uh, National, our, our regional Grand Chief here, or for a man, we always say uh, a good welcome to Chief Alvin Fiddler and uh, for his work and uh, uh, his good things that he does for the Anishinaabe Ski Nation here, Alvin, and uh, to your team, your regional deputy grand chiefs that are here, Anna Betty and Derek and Jason, and uh, they function as a team. And uh, that's a good thing to see. As well, uh, to acknowledge uh, Grand Chief Solomon as well. He's, uh, uh, from over there, he did. He's a, a good zigger. Not a jigger, but a zigger. He's a good zigger. <laughs> so acknowledge and thank you. I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, as well uh, uh, National Chief Ovid. I don't know if he's here. Uh, he was here earlier on. I don't know where he is, but uh, yeah, it's his birthday today. So please, uh, I don't know where he is. He's like a fine wine, he gets better with age. Sometimes a little moldy, he says, but he's still there. He has lots of kick, so I don't know where he is. But uh, Ovid, uh, happy birthday, wherever you are. And, uh, I know he's uh, helping on the health agenda, the health agenda that's so important for all of us. So again, uh, to the chiefs and men, as well, I want to acknowledge the, uh, the ceremony and the honor for bringing in the, uh, the veterans, legal staff, and the drum for their song and the elder for the prayer. Uh, this morning as well, I'll be uh, giving an overview. I always go local, regional, national, and international. And I see your agenda is filled with uh, many guests coming. Uh, the Premier will be here. And there's some things I would suggest to ask of the Premier. Uh, even as well, uh, my colleague on the AFN Executive Regional Chief Day will be here to provide an overview of health and some of the transformational agenda on health. As a national chief, I grew up portfolio to the 10 regional chiefs, and I've given out health to Regional Chief Day to provide and lead that for all 634 First Nations across Canada. So, to acknowledge as well the uh, Women's Council, the, the Elders Council, and the Youth Council, and uh, it's good to see some young people uh, taking leadership positions. And uh, Jocelyn and I, uh, we used to sit on the APTN Board of Directors together a few years ago, and uh, now she's the chairperson of that board. And uh, that's, uh, that's really good to see young people starting to take leadership positions. That's amazing. So I lift you up, Jocelyn, for that. And this young man here, Derek, it's true, we used to stay together when he was at university in uh, Regina. He used to live with me there. He became like a family. And, uh, uh, a lot of times we had to help each other, and correct each other, and listen and grow together. So it's good to see him rising up into leadership positions as well. And, uh, I always tell him when we used to play hockey, you gotta pass me that puck more. <laughs> He's a good player. He's a good hockey player. But I wanted to start off as well in the sense of something that's happening across this great land, cultural island, and, and more and more of our people are starting to get into leadership positions. But something happening in, in a really good way with our young people that's providing a lot of hope that's providing a lot of inspiration. A lot of things can change if you put your dedication and perseverance and persistence to things that you want to drive for. And when you watch 
the, the Olympics that are coming up, the Winter Olympics are coming up in, in February. And when you watch Canada's national team, the Olympic women's hockey team, they're going to be playing. But there's a young First Nations woman that has made that team. And she's an Anishinaabe Kwe. She's an Ojibwe lady. She's from the Cody First Nation in Treaty 4 territory where I'm from. Bridget Laquette has made that team. So when you see that name on the ice, you can say First Nations people can do things in a good way when they have that same opportunity. So she's really risen up and uh, she's like a role model for us. She's 25 and uh, she's the first ever First Nations person that has made the Olympic women's hockey team. So I wanted to start off by saying that to show the young ones and the old ones in the room, First Nations people can do it. First Nations people can rise up and do things in a good way. So she's representing all of us. So Bridget Laquette, I lift her up and salute her for her strong leadership in that way. This morning, Chiefs again, local, regional, national, international. And we're here in Anishinaabe Ski Nation territory and Treaty 5, Treaty 9. I'm from Treaty 4. Kuskateo Moskosiskunagin, Little Blackberry Reserve is my home. It's where I grew up, Treaty 4 territory. And I always, just to remind me when we go to the number of treaty territories, I do put on this medallion, a treaty medallion. Because things we're going to be talking about, just to remind ourselves of that special relationship we have with the Crown. The Crown and Right of Great Britain at one time, now because of 1982, the Crown and Right of Canada. That treaty relationship. And treaty will always trump policy. Treaty was all, always trump policy. And so looking towards treaty implementation according to the spirit and intent. And so anytime we say we come together as treaty people, we just want to see our treaty honored and implemented according to the spirit and intent, the way our elders understand it. Because we know we never gave up anything under treaty. But peaceful coexistence and sharing, sharing the land and resource wealth is how we're supposed to be. But that's what we don't see. So even when you talk about education, why did the Prime Minister go out to Picantrico? Why did he go there to open a school? Why is the federal government providing a school to our people? Federal fiduciary trust obligations, treaty responsibilities. When you are ready to settle down on your reserve, we'll provide a little red brick schoolhouse and teach your children the cunning of the white man. Spirit and intent of education. In times of sickness and pestilence, we'll keep a medicine chest at the house of the Indian agent. Spirit and intent to treat right to health care. All these rights. Continue your avocation of hunting, fishing, trapping, and gathering. So, Prime Minister, help fish. I hope the Kanjadum issued him a license or permit to take those fish. <laughs> Reverse it. Reverse it. Hunting, fishing, trapping, and gathering. All of these rights. And Chiefs, the most important right we have, the right to self-determination. Very important right. So this treaty obligation, very important. So locally, I'm gonna start off nationally, regionally, and then international. So nationally, when we look at it now, we just finished our Chiefs Assembly a month or so back. And that Prime Minister came out to our Chiefs Assembly past number of years. And he committed to our Chiefs and Assembly there would be an inquiry to missing murdered just women and girls. So there's an inquiry. Obviously there's some challenges there to try to get it back on track, but we're going to keep pushing to make sure that the families are heard first and foremost. A total new reset, everybody says. More extension, more time for the inquiry to do its work, because it's very heavy work they're doing. So the inquiry is going forward. It's not AFN's inquiry. So if we say it's a government started, but the families push for that. So we want to make sure anything they do is family focused, first and foremost. And 75, 80 percent of the time when we talk about inquiry to some religious from girls, there's a constant theme. And that constant theme is that the policing system, the justice system needs to be reviewed. Because when it comes to resources, when it comes to investigations, when it comes to communication, that whether it be the RCMP, whether it be city police or municipal police forces, when it comes to missing, murdered, indigenous women and girls, 
that there was not a lot of respect and not a lot of effort, not a lot of respectful communication when it comes to that. That theme seems to be coming all the time. So we said we challenged the chiefs of police two years ago when I met with them. I said, prepare yourselves as chiefs of police because you will be taken to task. You will be called into question about why you did or didn't do anything on these certain files. So the police justice system part of the MMIW is a very important piece. So the inquiry is there. Our chiefs and assembly passed a resolution to support the extension of the inquiry. So that work's gonna be ongoing. That's one piece unto itself. He also came and said, we will implement all 94 calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. All 94 calls to action. Very important piece, because one of those calls to action is the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. That's the framework to reconciliation in Canada. It's that framework to reconciliation in Ontario. It's that framework to reconciliation back home in Saskatchewan the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I'm gonna come back and give a review, a report on that piece. He also said we will remove the 2% funding cap. Removal of the 2% funding cap that's been in place for 20 years and find a process to work towards long-term, sustainable, predictable funding. He said that to our Chiefs and Assembly. And so we had last December the fiscal update, a new fiscal report, a new fiscal overview how we're trying to move away from the contribution agreements that the Chiefs and Council signed, and how we're trying to move towards nation to nation grant transfers, just like the Feds transfer to the provinces. Same thing can apply to us from the Feds to First Nations governments. What does that look like? How does that move ahead? Because you know, the FSOs will be coming out to reserves pretty soon, from INAC. I still call it INAC, even though there's two departments now, but the FSOs will come out, there you go, Chief Brown. Here's your contribution agreement. You don't. No, you don't. You don't sign it. You don't get any funding. You know. So that's how it's going to work. The FSOs they come out, and so move, and then you have another. If you have a policing program, there's another contribution agreement, another department. Same thing with non-insured health benefits and NADAP and transportation and health. That's another department, another contribution agreement. Then you've got a daycare. ESTC, same thing, another contribution agreement, another federal government department. Another audit, another report, all these reports that don't, don't go anywhere, except to the Regional Indian Affairs Office, and they just sit there. So moving away from that system towards transfers, so that fiscal, he said that would happen. Then he said investments in education, K-12, but as well post-secondary. Those have to be put in place. And they also said there would be a federal law and policy review. So all the laws that are aligned with treaty rights, Aboriginal rights, the UN Declaration have to be changed. The policies that are outdated that have to be changed. Comprehensive claims policy, addition to reserve policy, specific claims policy, and the inherent rights of self-government policy all have to be fixed and updated. So there's processes in place for those things. Five things to give updates on, and five things and pieces of work to go forward came two years ago, said three things. We will work with you to make sure there's a national indigenous language revitalization act. A new piece of legislation. A big piece of work going forward. I provide an overview on that. He also said we will work with you to implement a legal framework for the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And so you see the Liberals support Bill C-262, that federal NDP private members bill. They said they're going to do that. But there's another reconciliation piece we need to fix and work on as well. And then he also said law and policy. So laws and policy again, twice now. Process to fix that. Get those, get those fixed and get those in line. So going back up to those five things from MMIW to the TRC calls to action, but to the new fiscal. There are regional forums now that can happen. On this, this is on the new fiscal update. You saw in December the fiscal report adopted by the Chief Assembly. We have our Chiefs Committee and Fiscal Team. How the AFN is set up, we have Chiefs Committees on every item. We have a Chiefs Committee on Education, Chiefs Committee on Languages, Chiefs Committee on Fiscal, Chiefs Committee on Health, Chiefs Committee on Environment, and we rely on each regional chief 
to appoint a chief to sit on each of these committees from across the region, to sit on these national committees. So we have our National Chiefs Committee on Fiscal. Last year we worked and there was two things that were successful. I always say now the policy has changed, whereby, I used to call it March Madness. Remember that? When you have a surplus, February, March, that if you don't, if you don't spend it, you lose it. So I call it March Madness, in some cases March Stupidity. Lots of t-shirts, a lot of hats, a lot of trips all over, whatever, we gotta spend it, let's spend it. Well, that's changed now. You can now carry things over from one fiscal year to the next. So that's movement. You can start planning properly, long-range strategic planning, so you don't have to spend the end of March or you lose it. And then they also indicated the O&M policy will be fixed. The only, the only Indian Affairs used to fund maybe 67% of O&M emergency management for fire, policing, water, all those things. So they said it's a flawed policy. So watch for that amount of money in this federal budget to fix that. So that's that fiscal. We're trying to move towards transfers instead of contribution agreements. And so there's movement that some reserves, so there's 633 reserves across Canada. They're trying to say 100 out of those 600 have good financial policies in place. And they can look to those reserves for 10-year grants, 10-year transfers now. Question you got about who are those 100? How are they decided on? Who will they be? You know, all these questions are great, but it's in the sense that now you don't have to do it year to year. You can look at 10 year, 10 year um, contribution or nation to nation transfers. Possibility. That's 100 out of 600. What about the other 500? So capacity building. Another area that we have to look at is capacity building for all those other 500. Elements of a new fiscal framework. We say that it's got to be based, any new funding arrangement that we have has to be based on total membership on and off reserve, has to be based to keep up with inflation, has to be based on needs. There has to be a northern remote indice factor put into place. And I said the big one is that any monies we receive as First Nations people aren't supposed to come from the backs of Canadian taxpayers. That's not how it's supposed to be. Anything we get as First Nations people is because of all the land and all the resources we're sharing with everybody else in Canada. So we, as First Nations people, have shared billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of economic growth in this thing called GDP, gross development, your GDP, the economic growth. And so we want to have a percentage of GDP, part of that fiscal agreement, because that's where everything in Canada is based, on land and on the resources that First Nations people are sharing with everybody else. That's the elements of a new fiscal framework, a new fiscal agreement with the Crown. And yes, you can say there's federal fiduciary trust obligations, and yes, there's treaty obligations, but again, that misnomer, and so to everybody watching on TV, get that point. That anything we get as Indians, as First Nations people, is not to come from the backs of Canadian taxpayers. It's to be born from the wealth and the riches of all the land and the resources that we're sharing. And that's where we gotta keep putting our energy in heads. That's what we gotta keep educating people about. So that when we go to Coffee Row, whether it be Tim Hortons or a local restaurant in town, our non indigenous brothers and sisters say that. And instead of looking at Indians with disdain and everything else and rolling up the eyes, that, oh, you guys get everything for free, and oh, you Indians are a burden on my tax dollars, you're like, hmm. He said, they would start them saying that, wow, thank you, First Nations people. You guys have shared a hell of a lot of land with us white people in Canada. Thank you so much for that. Wouldn't that be a great day to see that discussion and conversation around Coffee Road? <laughs> that's where we got to take it. And that's what I see starting to happen. That's what I see starting to happen. And that's the most important thing, percentage of land and resources that we're sharing. That's elements of a new fiscal arrangement with the Crown. Element of a new fiscal agreement. So that's that 2% update. And then again, part of this, Chiefs, every year, how the system works 
is that we've got to influence. Cree would call him that Sunya Ogima, that big money chief. Who is that one? Well, that's the Minister of Finance, federally, Bill Morneau. He's the one we have to influence every year because there's going to be a federal budget every year. Then the challenge as well as for your regional chiefs and your PTOs, your tribal chiefs, your grand chiefs, is to influence the Ontario. And the Premier is going to be here. Who is her Director of Finance or Ministry of Finance in Ontario? That's where decisions are made. So we're going to influence the federal decision maker on finance and budget. Then you also have to influence your Ontario Minister of Finance. Two systems you got to influence every year. So with Bill Morneau, when you have different ministers of the Crown come to you, if that minister does not receive any new monies from that federal budget in that fed for their department, it doesn't flow out to the regional director generals, it doesn't flow out to you guys as chiefs. So you have to influence that big pie nationally. And so nationally, the, the federal budget is about $240 billion. That's their annual federal budget, $240 billion. So how are you as chiefs? Grand Chief Alvin, National Chief Belgar, how are we influencing decisions around that federal budget? What gets put into that federal budget? The ministers lobby hard inside, then we lobby, you're supposed to lobby hard outside. And so by doing that, that's why everybody responds every time there's a federal budget announcement. When's it coming out? What's in the federal budget? Holy smokes, Minister Philpott got another 50 billion for this. Whatever they mock. You know, so that's the job of all leadership, influencing the federal budgets. And so there's a federal budget coming down now, February, March. You can see even the last year the push for policing as a priority. So when you see Minister Ralph Goodale get up and say, hey, we have $291 million of new money for policing. That's a big push. That was a big lobby effort. That was a big advocacy effort because the new policing was a big issue, not only in NAN, but right across Canada. <laughs> that our First Nations police services don't get the same salaries, don't have the same programs, don't have the same services, don't have anything to compare with the RCMP or anybody else. So policing. So I'm going to keep moving along. I've got about two minutes and uh, so so that's one piece so it puts the federal budget and so there's gonna be a federal budget coming out in March February March so hot spots we push for band support funding increases so all 634 bands will see monies at the band support funding monies for child and family services to end discrimination for child care on reserve we've also lobbied for O&M Water and housing and infrastructure, those things should be in that federal budget. Because housing is a number one priority amongst all of our First Nations. Housing and jobs, jobs and housing. Getting our First Nations communities off diesel, big thing. All those things are part of that. So now, here we go. That's the things to keep in mind. May 1 and 2 is our next AFN National Chiefs Assembly. Just to focus on federal legislation. That will be in Ottawa, or in, on the Quebec side at that casino, May 1 or 2. Nothing else but federal legislation. So language legislation, hundred legislation, navigable waters, marijuana legislation, all the things that the federal government's coming up with, focusing on that for May 1 and 2. March, April 11 and 12, the NRTA in Winnipeg. Lands and resources, a big issue. National forum on April 11 and 12. Whose land, whose resources? Start using these words, assumed crown sovereignty, assumed crown jurisdiction. Assumed crown sovereignty. And that's part of the piece international wise. NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. My last few points here, and I've got to wrap it up, but I'm going to be around here all day, Chiefs. Six point plan on child welfare. Minister Phil Pot has a six point plan to end discrimination in child welfare. You have a chance with the Premier when she comes because you have to establish that respectful process with the province to fix the Child and Family Service Agency. That's the most important thing. 
because you've got the on reserve that's going to be fixed with monies that come out to end discrimination. But we have 40,000 First Nations children in provincial care systems across Canada. Fixing those systems. So when we meet with the premiers, we say, establish your respectful bilaterals with chiefs and leadership. Change your curriculum and the education system to teach treaty and Aboriginal rights. Have an Indigenous Land Revitalization Act in your province and territory. Look at formal resource revenue sharing agreements with chiefs and leadership. All those things are important provincially. Establish a table to fix a child welfare system provincially. So things can happen federally, but provincially it's just as important. All those things have to happen. My last points then, with the um, NAFTA is international, we have Indigenous People's Chapter in NAFTA. First time ever, Indigenous People's Chapter within the International Trade Agreement. And we're going to keep working on NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. United Nations, United Nations Turn and Forum on Indigenous Peoples coming up in New York, dealing with land, resources, and territories. Follow the CERD, Committee for Elimination of Racial Discrimination Report that keeps hammering Canada because Canada's rated sixth quality of life. Same in the seat for our people, we're 63rd. So there's poverty. This gap's got to close. That's what we're trying to do. Locally, regionally, nationally, internationally. And then the Pope's visit, 2019. 2019, trying to get Pope Francis to Canada for two reasons. One, to apologize to survivors of the residential school system. And two, to make sure that those decrees of uh, doctrines of terra nullius and doctrine of discovery are illegal racist doctrines. That's where the Crown comes and plants a flag and somehow gains title to land and territory. That's why we use these words, assume Crown sovereignty, assume Crown jurisdiction. So local, regional, national, international. Uh, chiefs, the last point is just occupy the field and create your own laws and move beyond the Indian Act. That's the ultimate goal. We're moving beyond the residential schools now. We listen and learn from the pain from there, the genocide, but the Indian Act is still here. So how do you wish to move beyond the Indian Act? Create your own laws, create your own jurisdiction, exert your own jurisdiction and sovereignty, and have your own First Nations Child and Family Services Act. That's the challenge that we got to do. So Chiefs, I'm going to be around here all day. Let's have a, a great day of dialogue, and I'm very honored to be in that territory. Ego say, thanks for listening. Can I speak to you now? Yeah. Miigwech, uh, National Chief Harry Bellegard, and we have a gift that is being presented by uh, Deputy Grand Chief uh, Derek Fox. And again, uh, give him a hand. Thank you very much.